Hi, I'm Karen Sutherland. Welcome to my garden classroom. This is my inner city suburban block in Melbourne where I grow over 200 edible and useful plants and the knowledge I gained from doing that, along with chickens, fish and bees, I use to help you create beautiful edible gardens with a really wide variety of plants. Come and see what I do. orange in my front garden and I'm going to give you a bit of a rundown on citrus gall wasp and other citrus problems but we'll start with citrus gall wasp. So this is now the bane of gardeners lives in in uh, Melbourne particularly and you can see that there's a little trap in here this gives you some idea this is a yellow sticky trap that we previously cut up into little shapes and that has trapped all sorts of insects probably including some citrus gall wasps and possibly some ants as well, which is handy to trap on citrus because they like to farm scale and move them around your citrus and, and cause scale problems on your citrus trees. So this is the old way we used to have sticky traps. This is a very small one, mind you. We won't use that anymore. What we use now is like, you have to, you can see that in the foliage there, is some traps set into mesh. And this helps prevent the, the um, traps being stuck to you by birds and small lizards in your garden because we really don't want that to happen and the small insects that are causing problems like the ants and the gall wasp are able to still get into that trap area so the gall wasp are very tiny they're only um, two or so mil I think from memory they're really tiny and they don't tend to fly very far because they're so small so they usually get a blow in the wind from your neighbour upwind of you who has a lemon tree and is not treating it which is very common and it blows into your tree and uh, once they're in your tree from wherever, wherever they came they they lay eggs in the softer growth near the outside of the plant so when you're looking for the gall wasp to remove and there was a nice bit I saw in here that I'm going to look for again you're looking for a swelling in the branches and this is where we've removed one earlier so take a little bit of dead wood off there and a dead leaf so this this scraped off area here a scar is where we've removed a gall wasp in the past and i'm going to show you how to do that now so here's a typical swelling caused by citrus gall wasp laying eggs into the branches now the little tiny hole there, that tiny, tiny hole you can see there just as a pinprick is where one of them has hatched unfortunately and October is about the time when they hatch in Melbourne and so a lot of people do think that that's the only time they have to remove them ready for October so they remove them in September and that was the old information. However the new way of thinking or how I would think about it from experience is that they now because of climate change are hatching throughout the year. So. Uh, you have to be really diligent and continue having your traps in your tree and removing them every every two months on average. Now this one here, because this, this swelling is 360 degrees around the branch, we have to remove this entire piece here, which is really tricky when it's on, the, on a junction of a branch. So that's caused quite a bit of damage to the branch, but there's not much else you can do. And if we have a look there, we might be able to see the Actually, that's a little black. That little black thing is the gall wasp getting ready to hatch. So anyone who's squirmish or Buddhist, look away, because this is what you do when you find those. <laughs> you squash those <laughs> and make sure they don't live and, and hatch. And so there's going to be other little eggs in there too. And that's how we would get rid of those. So this is how we remove gall wasp when it's not 360 degrees around the branch. Unfortunately, we're going to have to remove that branch lower down, but I'll just give you a little example. If you find some gall wasp that is on this side of the branch but not the other, so the other side's clean and not swollen, then you can very carefully with some secateurs, I, I would advise a pocket knife but let's just do it with secateurs, we gently scrape off, try not to cut ourselves, we, we expose the surface of the gall and the little tiny dots you can see inside are the eggs that were there that will now no longer be able to hatch because you've broken the surface of them. So that would be quite okay to leave. That, that little bit of bark would scar over and sap would no longer flow through there, but the sap would be able to flow through the other side. However, 
this has a really substantially worse swelling just below that point which is 360 degrees around the branch and that has to be removed and if you look closely unfortunately some of those gall wasps have already already hatched and that's those little tiny holes you can see but if we cut that open we'll probably find that there's some that haven't hatched yet and so we definitely put this in the bin and there's some that are ready to hatch the little black things they're getting ready so you can see how tiny they are they're very very small there's the tiny wasps that's the best i've ever seen them actually it's kind of handy so that's how small they are they're possibly about two millimeters because that's got the wing it's got its little wings and the whole thing it's ready to go and cause more damage in more citrus trees so we're not very buddhist and we squash them 